Hey guys, this is Anna James, and most of you know me as Annalyn, and today, I'm still, just kidding, <laughs> we're gonna be doing part four of this question. I think it was part four, or it's part three. I think it's four. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> but we're gonna be finishing this. Um, <clears throat> so do you think your parent, um, how do you think your parents would describe you as a child? Technically... The only one that can describe me is that would be my mom. And, hmm. hmm. I don't know. Or my uncle. Um. How do they describe me? Rotten. Outrageous. <laughs> Phil, well. Technically younger. How young do you mean by that? Because if we're going for like, kind of like easing into teenage years, um, filled with sorrow would be one of them as a description. Um, but um, 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 if you could go back to any age or time of your life, what time would it be? Depending. Do I have to live as myself again? Because I swear to God, if I had to see myself, I'd be like... Girl, get your butt on a treadmill. You gonna grow up and you gonna be like, ugh. Just kidding. I'm fabulous and I know it. Um, but no, if I could go back. To any time, does it have to be, like, when I was still alive? Like, can I go back to, like, drastic time? Can I go back to when, like, Jesus was here, per se? If you believe in that thing. By the way, can I find you? But, um, no. Um, jeez. If I had to go back to a time, it would be when my grandparents were still alive. Like, um, my grandfather and my great-grandmother. I would tell them how much I love them and how much I'm going to miss them. And tell them that I'm sorry. For a lot of things. When you're a child, you don't know the consequences of your actions. And growing up and realizing that, I fell into depression and I realized that I was such a cruel child to, um, most of the people I was around. I've changed a lot, so, thank God. But, um, yeah, I'd go back then. What's something you believe in that not everyone else does? Okay, <laughs> if we're going for, like, friends and family, or even bullies, it would be the fact that I'm not going to meet, um... I'm not going to meet my heroes, which is Pat, Gar, J.P., Wade, Mark, Sean, and Felix. Um, or it would be that I'm never going to lose weight. Or I'm never going to amount to anything. Those are three things that... Those are... <laughs> if I were to turn them the other way, those would be the things that I believe in. I believe that, yes, one day I will at least see one of my heroes. I will amount to something. And I will lose my weight. Which, technically, I'm already down 16 pounds, so... Gotta keep it going, though. <laughs> That's the problem. I haven't been to the gym, so keeping below that 16 pounds is really... Really something. But, um... Technically, I've been eating, like, a lot. I don't... I don't know why. I'm getting closer, I've been eating, like, way too much. But not gaining. So, I'm good. But, um... With that, yeah. A lot of people don't believe I'm gonna meet my... What I call my so-called friends. And I wouldn't call them so-called friends. To me, they're friends, but to them, I'm, I guess you would say, just another fan. But, um, they don't believe that. Some people, um, my friends that aren't really my friends believe that I won't lose my weight. And what was the other one? I completely forgot. Weight, fr um, friends, and, um, I already forgot. Oh yeah, another thing. One of my other friends, one of my very good friends, said, I call BS, you're not going to California. Watch me. Watch me. And I will, so. Deal with it. <laughs> I don't know why, I'm kind of snappy tonight. <laughs> um, what's one thing you would say that makes you unique from other people? Okay, I've been told this many times... And I still get told this, and I don't, 
I don't see how. Um, some people call me a leader. They basically say that I stand out. Basically, <laughs> like literally, I stand out. But um, other than that, the fact that I don't have to be fake with people. I help people who are in need. I'm just a genuine person and I'm honest. And I'm kind. And I have money. And that's why people use me. But, <laughs> sorry, getting way too deep. But, um, no. That's like one thing that people say I'm unique for is caring about other people. And that's because I've been through hard times where I had no one. I didn't have a shoulder to cry on. I couldn't talk to anybody. And I wasn't, I wasn't the one for making friends. I wasn't the one for talking to people, being outgoing. I stayed to my small circle, and I kind of see that I do still, but not as much as where I would, like, if someone were to come up to me, like, I'd just be like, do you know who you're talking to? Like, do you mean to talk to me, or are you talking to someone behind me? But, um, <laughs> no. In that case, um, yeah, that's just the thing that makes me unique, I guess. Um, I see that, too. I feel like, you know what, yeah, I am kind, and... I do help people, but it's the fact that I know how it's been for me to not have anyone. So it's like, I mean, family, that's one thing, but you know, sometimes it's better to have that one friend that you can always count on that has your back with everything and listens to listen and not listen to reply. That just depends on what type of person you find. <laughs> and I found a really good person for that. What's one thing you feel your life is missing? I have a father figure, I have a mother, and I have my uncle. I feel like, even like now, even though I know I'm going home for a week, I feel like, like one thing I'm scared of is when I go, like it's not gonna be good enough. Like I feel like when I come back, I'm not gonna, like I'm not gonna be healed. I feel like, Going to California means more to me than anyone else in my family. Because, you know, they lived most of their whole entire life there. And I didn't get the chance to. And I'm just scared because um, this is when I, um, the only reason why we're going is so then after I don't keep talking about California, I don't keep talking about going home and being happy and And I'm kind of scared that, um, when I end up going home and I end up coming back, that, um, I'm going to want to stay in California forever. Um, I've lived most of my life in the past. I've let a lot of things get me down, tear me down, and one of the biggest ones was going home, you know, because, um, most of my family passed away there, and it's the fact that... I don't know, when I was little, I, I always expected the fact that when I go home, maybe I'll get to see them. Tell them how sorry I am for everything. And I know they're not there. <laughs> I know, depending on what I, what I personally believe in, is that they're in a better place. Where I'm not going to be for a while. <coughs> <coughs> God, please don't tell me I spit on the camera. Okay, we're good. But it's the fact that when I go home, I'm scared when I come back. I'm not going to be happy. I'm still not going to be, you know, like, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, we went on this trip. But it doesn't mean anything because I'm still not going to be there permanently. Like, the effects are not going to stay with me. This trip is to reconnect with myself. Because I felt like when I left from California, I left everything there. I left my life. I left my friends. I left myself because when I came here, I had to pretend like I was something I'm not. I had to be the big girl that didn't care what anybody said. I had to be the heartless part of my friendship. The bee. I had to be that because <laughs> if I showed myself, what I learned from my three years at my middle school was the fact that people will walk all over you. and. They will take your kindness for granted. They will use you. And my ninth grade year, I let that go. 
I ended up... <laughs> I became something I wasn't. I lied about who I was. I lied about certain things that I am completely front with now. I learned that I don't have to lie about myself to make people happy or to make them even like me at that. Because all that matters is that I like me. And now I'm completely, my 10th grade year at my new school, I'm completely honest with people. If you don't like the way I am, then you ain't got to be around me. And I'm proud of that because before I did have to lie. I had to put on this big act every single morning like, hey, like, what, you want to fight? I ain't gotta be that way. I'm not that way. Like, it's like, if I have to defend myself, I will. But, <laughs> does it mean I'm gonna physically hurt anybody? I'm not that way. I don't see violence as a solution. But that's how some people are, and that's how some people take it. So before I had to be that way, I had to be aggressive, I had to be rude, I had to be... <sighs> and my friends, I had to always be the smart one. I had to be like, oh, well, E equals MC squared and all this other crap that I didn't know nothing about, but they still believed it. And now it's like, I am the dumbest person in my group, but it gives me more of an opportunity to learn. Even if I'm the duff, the idiot, Ooh, excuse me, the idiot, or occasionally the smart one. But one thing I've always been in every group is the reasonable one, like the one with the most patience. I don't know why. But, um, no. Yeah, now I'm completely me. Sad thing is it, I still kind of feel like it's an act. But, um, no. Yeah, I've been rambling about this way too much. Um, yeah. But, um, no. On that note, once again, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. This has been Anna James, and I'm signing off. Bye!